ladies and gentlemen, the two first speakers are the very best proof of the power of the INSAFE network and the support of the European Commission. The next person is the representative of the Croatian Safer Internet Center. This is a quite a recent member of the INSAFE network, but they brought a lot of uh, energy. Boris is an expert on what's new. Uh, he is a fan of new applications. I'm sure his presentation will be something that will serve as a source, source of inspiration and will be something new and fresh. Uh, yeah, I think this is a great picture to start. Um, first of all, I do my presentations a little bit differently, so I need a lot of par participation from you. So just to start to see if you all, all of you are sleeping, do we all have smartphones here? Who has a smartphone? Yeah, a lot of smartphones, of course. Uh, why start with this picture? Uh, it shows one of the most powerful men in the world using the same technology that you can use in the next 15 minutes if you go to the store and buy it. Uh, and it shows the same amazement from Barack Obama and a child of nine using it for the first time. Of course, you see a Pikachu in the back uh, in the Oval Office while he's playing with the VR, something else is happening. So yeah, my name is Boris Sudanovic. I'm coming from Croatia, from Croatian Safer Internet Center. And around three months ago, the organizers, which I thank for the invitation very much, called me and said, would you like to do a presentation of new trends and new apps? And so I typed, yeah, OK, so what's hot right now? That's the title. Now I realize it's the shortest title in, in the whole conference, so I apologize for that. But today we're going to talk about trends and apps. I only do have 20 minutes for this, so if you have any more questions and want to talk about something more, please contact me on the coffee break or on the lunch break. This is just a short summary of what I have found talking to children in Croatia and around the world, talking to youth on Reddit and, and searching the online world, what is hip, what is cool or hot right now among the teens. Why trend apps together? Because there are apps that are following the trends and there are trends that are following the apps. So it's kind of a mishmash together. Something is not working. It doesn't matter. Uh, so new apps and trends and their effect on children and youth. Um, when we see a new trend, it may be dangerous, like the choking game that resurfaced a couple of weeks ago. It's a problem. Uh, when we see a trend of children thinking smartly about their privacy and, and their pictures online, it's a positive one. So every time we see a new trend or a new app, it's depending on how children use it. Sh should it be dangerous or should it not be dangerous for them? So for the start, before we even, even talk about anything, uh, I went to Reddit a couple of months ago, and it's a great site. It has over 10 million users a day. And I asked a simple question. Can you find the most useless apps there are on the phones and that do literally nothing or something bad? So around 2,000 replies, we gathered like 25 apps. If you have any of those apps, and I'm talking to David from Kaspersky, if you find some that are not supposed to be here, if you have any of those or your child has any of those, delete them immediately. Some of them give up give up your information, some of them give you ads, some of them give you spyware, malware, everything bad. Nothing good comes from these apps. And the last one, nearly every app that promises to save better life, you wouldn't believe how many children and youth today have apps that save better life and do not use better life saver integrated in their phones. So most of these app, apps, if not all, are really bad for your phone. So delete them if you have them. The statistics that I could find are, are the same as David's. Um, USA, uh, people from USA mostly do a lot of asking and a lot of answering about, about stuff. So these two data are from February 2016. These are the freshest data. And they are showing that, when, when they start stop blinking, uh, they are showing that Facebook is still rather cool. On the left side, you can see the most downloaded mobile apps in, in millions. And you can see Messenger, Snapchat, Facebook, and Instagram are, are the top four. Facebook owns three of those top four. Then on the fifth place, you can only see a game uh, called Color Switch. Uh, Facebook is not slowing down. If we think they, they are slowing down, they're buying some company that, that is rising up. And on the right side, you can see 
a wonderful statistic uh, showing that Messenger app is one of the really, really cool and new apps that, that kids are using to talking. Uh, David pointed it out. Uh, kids today and youth today are not only on one network as we are like Facebook or maybe LinkedIn or maybe WhatsApp. They're diversifying. They're using Facebook, but they're using Facebook for schoolwork. Every class that I went to to talk to has a Facebook group in which they share information between each other. And every class, even maybe a teacher from that class is in that group. But they're not posting pictures on Facebook because mom and grandma and, and sister, everybody is on Facebook. So it's not, it's not cool. They're posting it on Instagram. Now moms are coming on Instagram be because they saw it. So the kids are running off to Snapchat. Now people are gathering and, and learning about Snapchat. Now the kids are running off somewhere. It's, it's a constant uh, mice and, and, and cat game. But it still remains the same. Uh, they will know to use many more tools than we do, and we need to follow them in any way possible. Maybe not by every app they use, by, by, by with talking to them, by asking what the hell is Kick and Raccoon. I have never heard about it. And my biggest advantage is when I come to a class of like 40 kids, I ask what apps do they use, and they explain it to me. I learn much more than I learn by myself. So Facebook is still coolish, cool-ish. Um, when we ask children, is Facebook cool, they say no, but do they use it? Yes. So you cannot run away from Facebook, that's your problem. You have to log in everywhere, it's easier. Uh, they use it like, like their phone book, because they have all the contacts in the Facebook, so they don't have to go anywhere else. So when, you, when, you, when the slide is working, uh, the, the sister says to her mother, please don't use Savage. It makes me feel uncomfortable. And then dad asks, can I use it? And she's, she's no. And mom says Savage, and the word is ruined. So if we want to ruin a network, we should join it. Kids will run away from it, most definitely. And the blue screen of death. OK. Uh, the point I think the, my, my next slide was going to talk about, I hope, if, if, it, if it's, oh, it's working here, then it's great. Uh, how many of you have heard about Life Stage? One. That's even too much. Uh, I'm starting with the big ones. Uh, Facebook developed Life Stage. It limited the, the people that can see it or can approach it by 21 years of age. So it's a Snapchat clone in a way that it, you can post pictures, you can post videos with borders, as you can see, and you can share it to the world, but to a, a specific school. So when you join Live Stage, you probably most of you are all older than 21 and never got the invitation. I didn't get the invitation as well. Um, you can choose your age, and you can choose your school. And then you see the sentence, we can confirm that people who claim to go to a certain school actually go to that school. That's a Facebook statement, not my. I, I hope Facebook and Instagram are here. They're going to have some fun with me. Um, all videos you, you upload are public. Anybody can see them. Children are running to this network on Facebook. It's cool, it's new, it's closed. It's something like Facebook was when it was created for one school, for one college when it started. Then I saw this update like two weeks ago. Uh, it says we are now hiding lazy people who don't record videos. If you haven't recorded something lately, get off your butt and update your profile. This is an official statement for the update from Facebook for Live Stage. So kids are not sharing as much as Live Stage or Facebook would have wanted from them. So they put it in, in a sentence in front of their in front of that. So Live Stage was created like three or four weeks ago. It's really new, and then a week later, this comes up. They created this new thing for teens to copy Snapchat and Yik Yak, something of a combination of two. And it was later discovered by people who tried to, to log in that you can choose how old are you. There is no verification process except your Facebook profile, which you can lie about your age. And there is no direct contact on live stage. You cannot talk directly to someone, but you can see that they have a, their Facebook account connected. You can see all of their pictures. You can see where they go to school, what are their friends, and what are they doing right now and where. It became a perfect stalking app in a week. And if we see that the biggest 
among companies like Facebook create an app for children and youth that is popular, that is hip, because they want to hit that market, and they make a huge mistake with it, we have to question every single app that we find. One of the big, big things coming up is messenger rooms. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, some, I wouldn't say hackers, I would say IT guys, found in, in, in the messenger code, there is a preparation for messenger rooms. This is the logo, it should be the new logo. It's something of chat rooms that used to be, when you can put a certain subject, invite the whole world to talk about a certain subject inside the room. What will happen, nobody knows, it's not yet live yet, Mark Zuckerberg posted a, a Facebook post this week that this is going to be the biggest week uh, of something they have been developing for the last few years. Maybe it's messenger rooms, we don't know. But this is an app that is probably coming sooner rather than later. So it's something that we should definitely take a look at when it comes. It's creating small chat rooms with, with a lot of people that anybody that has a messenger can join in. Talking about the big ones, I love this title. YouTube launches its new social network, and it doesn't suck. Uh, uh, Google, I think, Anetta is here, or will be here, uh, had a Google Plus. It didn't go very well. It's still going, but YouTube did something good. YouTube and most of the networks we use and our children use are based around one big thing, and that's community. This is a community. And we all love to talk to people on, on similar interests and, and similar views and viewpoints. And YouTube used to be that. You could uh, watch a video and then you go to the comments and have a laugh or have a discussion. It was okay. Then it started to get a lot of toxic. It started to get a lot of cyberbullying and it, was, it started to get a lot of negative. And people would not scroll down after they watched the video. They would just go to another page. So YouTube found, found, found a solution. Now you have in every YouTube account that has a videos, you have a community tab, which is like a small network which you can join in. And the, the person that is owning the YouTube tab, the YouTube uh, account, can post pictures and articles and themes to discuss. And on every theme, on every post, you can discuss, comment, like, share. And every post is like a small community inside a community. And it's like creating another social network for everybody that uses YouTube. You don't need to, to, to comment anymore on the video. You can go to the community tab and comment there. I'm not saying about m much of these apps, are they good, are they bad, we can discuss it later because I have no time. I'm just pushing out if you don't know about them, these are the new things. This was like a week ago, YouTube launched it. One of the things then that when I started to talking to youth and uh, searching online, the biggest or the happiest thing is now is, is music in, in, in general sense, like Pandora or, or musically. Um, you may be heard of Dub Smash. It was a hit last year when you record the video of yourself lip syncing to another video. And it was great, it was a great hit, but it's a one time app. You do a couple of videos, you put it down, and you forget about Dub Smash. So some, they created musically. It's a social network that is based around the same principle. You, you record yourself, you can share it with your friends, you can invite your friends, you, can, you like each other's videos, and you need like three clicks to get to ad adult content, to profanities, to, to strong language, to some things that maybe your child aged 13 shouldn't rap about on, uh, on Musical.ly, which is publicly viewable, which everybody can like it and see it, and not every rap song from the 80s or 90s which they can easily find is suitable for your child. Uh, one of the biggest problems of, of Musical.ly, it, it covers a lot of different industries, from TVs, from, from shows, from horror movies, to music, and to different genres of music, and children, and mostly children, use it because it's fun for them. You, you mock around, it's, it, it's similar to Snapchat, are using and, and, and repeating like 10 or 15 times be, before you can really uh, say it in, in, in the right way. Double Dog. Have you ever heard of Double Dog? It's not popular, I'm glad. Uh, I think it's the stupidest app right now out there, and it will get even more so. Uh, we all install Double Dog. I put a dare, and I put $5 in. $5. And I dare you to jump from the 10th floor of the, this hotel into the pool. 
uh, people are eating live worms. When I say people, youth, teenagers, and uh, older, uh, eating live worms, jumping from hotels, uh, doing crazy runs over highways for like under ten dollars. If you do the challenge, you get twice the money. If you don't do the challenge, the, 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 you have to pay up three times the money, and you have a, you have to have a video recording of it, which is publicly viewable. So if you accept a dare to eat live worms, you have to record yourself eating live worms for five or ten dollars. It's never too much, and then it remains online. This is just one of these dare apps. Uh, there are many, many more of those. This one started to gain popularity. I hope it will not, because the challenges are really, really dangerous. It starts with a throw pencil in the garbage can for a dollar. It's OK. Uh, then it starts throw paper from the 10th floor. It's OK. And then the challenges ramp up as the prices go up from the challenges. So the kids and the youth don't, don't know no boundaries. When you see $50 and you see a challenge, you're going to do it. And you have like people from, from different, uh, different groups that can cheer you on and say, go, go, do it. It's a great challenge. Go, do it for 50 bucks. Whisper, have you heard about it? Site, app, uh, it's an anonymous site sharing for secrets and deep anxieties where you can post an image macro, an image, and then you post uh, uh, words or, or, or a sentence over it, and then you get anonymous resp responses and anonymous, again, pictures with, with letters or with, with sentences. Um, I would have shown you some of the awful, awful things. Uh, every, whenever we see anonymity, we see cyberbullying, of course. And whenever we see anonymity, we see honesty from children. You wouldn't even imagine, if you went to the site, go, see it, how children are using it and what, are they, want, what they want to express when they're anonymous with, with just one image and like five words in a sentence. And then they get response from every other person on the network using because it's anonymous. Um, one example is a guy said, I'm 27, and I, I never knew how to approach a girl. Uh, one of the top responses was with the rag and chloroform. And the translation kicks in right now. Uh, it's funny for them, but it's not so funny when you think about it. That, that, that's the most upvoted response for a question, I'm 27, and I don't know how to approach a girl. It's a problem, and the response is not good. We have after school, a uh, combination of the apps I'm talking about. I think I need to speed up a little because I'm going to lose time. Oh, this, uh, this is not my effect, by the way, this flashing thing. Uh, it's just here. It's after school. Um, the problem with the apps that are coming in, it's not Snapchat, it's global. The problem are these small, local, localized school apps. After school is an anonymous school app. So that means that all of us that are in the same school anonymously join in, and then we post pictures like this. And if you see on the right side, it says party tonight at 105 Folsom Street. Yeah, you're anonymous, and I can put your address for the entire school to come tonight for the party. Uh, it happened, of course, a couple of times, and then the school ba banned that app using in the school and stuff like that. Uh, every time we see a new app going in the school, there's some problem with it. Media covers it, and then like 10 more schools install it right away. Uh, the problem with this app, it's, it's really anonymous, and you cannot uh, find out who posted what. Of course, one of the first things that, that, that they do, they find a person in the school, then they start cyberbullying, because it's easy. Everybody in the school can read it, and everybody is anonymous. So after school, which sounds so cool, like after school, it's rather a dangerous app for a child to have and to talk anonymously with the people from their school which they already know, but now they talk anonymously. Whisper. Oh, no, I'm sorry, Wishbone. Wishbone. Uh, this is a girl equivalent of Wishbone. There is a guy equivalent or a boy equivalent. You probably never heard it. Uh, anybody here uses Wishbone? No? 
it's not so dangerous in, in a cyberbullying way that most of these before apps are. This is an app that wants to gather as much as information as it can from girls, young girls. Uh, every day you get a curated content of a couple of pictures, such as this, bangs long like this, uh, do you want a small engagement ring or a big engagement ring, and stuff like that. It's not easy and you choose left to right, you click it and you have 20 questions per day that are curated. You can create your own, of course, but most of the questions are curated. It's a marketer's dream. Girls, lo girls love it because every morning you can see what your friends voted and how they voted. You, c you don't see any information about a profile picture and a name, but you see what you like. They say in a sentence, I think, uh, are not sharing who they are, but what they prefer, which is almost dangerous as who they are. Uh, marketing wants to get in your ch children's phones, and they use these nice apps when they ask them in the morning, do you like Chanel or Dior? Do you like Max or some other brand? Every morning. And it's like 20 questions a day, and they're filling it out so... It's, it's fun to see how your friends and, and uh, friends from school react on the same question. It's the matter of should we allow our children to be a marketer's research in, in, her, in her or his phone. There's, there's a guy's version which doesn't look like this. It looks a little bit different. Uh, if we see anonymous apps, that's one group. If we see anonymous apps in schools, that's another group. Then we see something like dating apps. Uh, children are seeing you using Tinder, using OkCupid or whatever else dating app you use, but there is no dating apps for children under 18 because it's not allowed. So they use something like this. It's Meet Me. It sounds cool, but it's not to meet your friends. It's to meet the people you don't know. The point of it is to share or, or, or to expand your, your, your level of friends in a way that you can find people that are near you, that you don't have any connection with, but you can meet, you can talk, you can chat if you hit it up, and you can meet later on in, in real life. When we ask children, I think this is the next slide, when we ask children, yeah, uh, on Reddit, it's, it's a great source for information because it still has nicknames. You don't have to have a name or surname or anything. It's easy to sign up so people are, are honest there. It's not anonymous, but you don't have to have your real name. It, it was asked, what is cool right now? And most of the children answered dating apps. That's cool right now. They want to date online. And they were like, but there are no dating apps for children and teens and youth today. So what are you using? So they said, meet me and hot or not. Hot or not is, a, as it says, you get a picture and I say, are you hot or not? And that's it. App does that. So, but if you say hot and I say hot to your picture, we get a chat together and we can talk. So we know we both think it works the same way as Tinder, but it's, it, it's for youth to engage in, in, in a meaningful conversation, of course. Because I have no time, I have five minutes, ah, I have to rush. These are some of the apps that are cool right now, that the kids are using. If you haven't heard them, of, some of them are 15 years old. Uh, read up on them. Ask me outside and I'll explain. I have to run through tens. Have you ever heard of Raccoon app? Any of you? The most famous app right now in the world. Kids from 7 to 77 are using it. This is just one list. It takes control over the camera. It finds accounts on your device. It approximates and precise the location of your device. It views network connections. It runs on startup. It has the access to your Google account. It gives your, your data to third party access. And the children age 7 to 15 or 17 using it. We could all agree this is a lot of data from your child's phone. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it's wrong. That's Pokemon Go, it's not Raccoon. Pokemon Go, I, I, may, I may finish with this, was the biggest thing this year. And we can talk about Pokemon Go and I can tell you 15 other things that are good and that are bad. I'm gonna tell you just one thing. On Monday, if your child at 11.30 in the evening said, I'm going out, you would say, no, it's 11.30, stay in. A day later, he would say, I'm going out chasing Charizard. You would say, okay, you're going out. Second thing, if, if he, he was walking down the street and talking to strangers, you would say, come on, don't talk to strangers. But if he has Pokemon and the other person aged 25 or 35 has Pokemon, that's a connection right there. And he would talk to strangers almost 
in immediately. The first thing we saw with Pokemon Go, we conquered the world in two days. Two days. And it changed all that we taught our children. Don't talk to strangers. Don't go out at night. Don't go in people's houses. houses. People, the children died because of this app. One app, two days, changed everything that we taught our children. And they started walking like zombies and hitting stuff. Walk where you're going. Simple, st not, not, not simple advice is not even connected to the internet. They ignored it because for the first time, th the digital world conquered the real one. It was more interesting. Augmented reality was better than what they had around them. Think about it. I, I think I have like a couple of minutes. I'm going to run to some stuff. Beauty is changing. Beauty companies of the world are seeing that girls or women your age are buying two to five products a year. Youth and girls, uh, uh, children these days buy five to ten products a year. Why? They cannot stick to one brand. They cannot stick to one thing. We call them the swipe generation. They use it, they swipe it, they change it for something else. And beauty, beauty the whole beauty uh, conglomerate behind it sees it, and they're creating now apps where can you, you can rate, as in Tinder, what do you like, what you don't like, and then set it to address like 15 different beauty products. So the trends of themes are changing the economy that is approaching them, because they are seeing the change in apps they use, in an anonymity they want, and in the way they swipe left or right on certain things. Uh, I just want to point it out, Internet of Things or Internet of Toys, this was like six months ago, you had a search engine, publicly viewable, for vulnerable webcams all over the world. I don't even want to show you the picture underneath of a sleeping child in Canada. So if you have a web camera, it's, it's, it's connected to the, to the Internet, be wary of that, because there might be a person on a search engine, not a hacker in dark web, looking at your child at night because your camera is not well protected. This is just one instance I found. Uh, Instagram, I have like two minutes maybe? Yeah, two minutes, I'm gonna run through this. Look at these hashtags. How many people here use Instagram? Some, some. Children are going to Instagram to ask questions and to seek help. Instagram is the second biggest network. Uh, these hashtags, Anna, Rex, Mia, are all codes they use for different problems they have. I tested it out. I used hashtag self-harm. Instagram wouldn't allow me. They didn't give any results. So I said, okay, I'm gonna use hashtag want to die. Not only didn't they allow me to see pictures and everything, they suggested hate myself, worthless, want to die and keep on, keep on, keep on going. So I found one picture of a child cutting herself on Instagram and there is hashtag self-harm. And I was like, come on, I just typed self-harm, but it has two R's or three M's, it doesn't matter. Then you find the whole community. It was hidden, hashtag self-harm, but hashtag self-harm was open and had two million postings about it. If you're not using Instagram, they're using it. They're creating a community that they want to talk about, of problems they have. A lot of these questions that is, I need help. I'm cutting myself and I need help, and we are not there. To all the psychologists and all that are working with children, think about using Instagram as giving advice with those hashtags on how to handle those problems. It might get to them better than the tools that you're using right now. This is the last slide, I promise. Uh, these are the four things that I think are coming. Uh, virtual reality is all, mostly always connected with gaming or streaming. Uh, I think it's, it's social networks is, is the next big thing. Everything is live, live, live. And when one of your friends goes live, you get a, even a notification on your Facebook and, and it jumps to the top of your feed. And it, it, it's great. Black Sabbath was in Croatia. I couldn't go. My friend went. I watched the concert for the full 30 minutes until her phone died. But I watched the concert live and it was awesome. Um, in a couple of years, I will put my headset on and I will be with her on that concert to virtual reality. So, so there are companies right now developing tools to, to, to create social networks for virtual reality. Um, live, 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 even death. We saw that case from America where uh, 
fiance and her fiance was sitting in a car and the police shot her boyfriend and she started up Facebook Live. The last moments of, of, of her boyfriend or fiance was streamed live on Facebook. We are in an age where teenagers do not have time. It has to be now. If it's live, it's, it's great. But we have to teach them how to use that technology. Thank you. I, I, I ran from the last <laughs> part and I... Thank you. Thank you. Perfectly on time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Proszę Państwa, czy jakieś pytanie do Borysa? All right, do we have any question to uh, Boris? Yes, we have one. We have one. Well, my colleague is approaching you with the mic. Hello, uh, my name is I come from Belgrade, from Share Foundation. Dobar dan. Dobar dan, yeah. <laughs> Uh, thank you for your presentation. I think it was very interesting. So you mentioned many risks for children, and I think we would agree there there is not coming back. This risk will be there will be even more and more of these risks. So the question is, what could we do, right? And one of the things that European Union did is it adopted this general data protection regulation, and yeah. it's the first time that uh, it mentioned children and children's data. And one of the thing is that if <laughs> It will be applicable for 2018, and if children want to use all of these services, all of these all of these apps, I mean, they will have to get uh, consent from their parents, parents yeah. if they are under 16. So basically, my question is, are two questions because you work with children. Is this possible? Because children are more digital literate than their parents, and is it good for children to have permission of their parents to use application? Okay, first of all. If thank you. Some of us here, uh, thank you for your question. Uh, some of us here have children. Uh, they do not ask for permission. They do a lot of stuff that we don't want them to do, first of all. So that's my opinion on permissions. Uh, second love, age, really, in today's world. Uh, Facebook is 13. It has thir the biggest number of age 13 users in Croatia. And I was like, the stats don't go. I have, I have stats from my country, and I have stats from Facebook. It's the wrong number. Why? Because children age nine, they do not even know how to put in the year. You just scroll and click yes. Okay, scroll and click yes. Scroll and click yes until they find 13 or 16. So it's it's something on the middle. I, I don't think it will work. We'll just have more 16 year olds than we have it in, in real life. And you asked the first part of the question, what can we do? We can do this. We can educate ourselves better. Do not be shocked by the newest app because we don't know it. And the kids like Double Dog, you know the Double App, uh, the, the, their app. 50,000 people use it. It's not much, but 50,000 people use it. It's a great number, and we don't know about it. We never heard about it. It could be a hit. And we were, yesterday, I was approached by two elderly men, like 55, what do you do? I do security with children. They asked me the question, what can I do? I'm the last generation. I have a, a biggest divide between the technology that my child, age 15, is using and that I'm using. And, and it's true. It, it's happening to us, age 30, 35, with the kids age 10. You can only talk to them. Ask them directly, what are you doing with your phone? What is that app? Why is that app on your phone? And how do you use it? Don't be aggressive. Don't attack them. They're going to use a lot of things, which, which are fun. But kids want to have fun. They want to take pictures with Snapchat, and it's not a bad thing. When, it's, when they start taking naked pictures with Snapchat, then it's a problem. Then you should talk to them and explain them, maybe that's not the smartest thing to do. So my biggest advice for all the parents here and everybody that's, that is working with children, talk to them. The most of those apps that I showed you, I didn't even know about them. And I asked the children, what are the new coolest apps right now? Like, nobody knows about them, and they gave it to me. It just, did you, did you hear about Double Dog? Did you hear about Whisper? Did you? I was like, amazed. They're much smarter and much faster than, than we give them credit for. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Boris.